Today we're going to cover insulation installation and some of the really common issues that we see where insulation isn't working as effectively as it should. So today's a warm day and we're missing insulation at the top of the walls just in this area. Most of the wall seems to be quite well insulated goes from 20 degrees in a good spot and then up to 23 degrees in, a, in, in the uninsulated areas. So it just shows you how important it is to make sure your insulation is installed as consistently as possible. Like my scotch, I like it black, same with my insulation. So we're going to cut one of these open and show you, lo and behold, the insulation isn't black. So the Bradford Black insulation product is made in Australia. This insulation is actually four ceilings, but I wanted the extra thickness today to go through this demonstration. So the first thing that's really important when it comes to insulating a wall is understanding where your air barrier is. In high performing building envelopes like passive house buildings, they've always got two air barriers. There's a weather air barrier on the outside of the building envelope, which in, in the lower climates of Australia is a more permeable uh, air tightness barrier and then on the inside of the building envelope there's a, a less vapour permeable membrane that is also airtight that is on the inside of the wall cavity. Now the insulation that is installed for these types of wall systems it needs to be the insulation needs to be directly abutted to both air barriers. In the majority of Australian homes we mainly have an air barrier on the inside of the building envelope and the air barrier is actually the plaster. When it comes to installing insulation directly abutted to brickwork, there's only a few types of insulation that you can do that with and they're hydrophobic insulations. These types of insulation are like your, your blow-in insulation, which are like a, they're a, they're a hydrophobic type of insulation that companies come in and actually install uh, inside your blow-in inside your wall cavity. So in this situation, uh, to create an air barrier and moisture barrier for the insulation, we've actually put a bitumen membrane on the brick wall. In this circumstance, we've got a service that's coming through the wall. We have to make sure that the insulation is carefully cut and the service is allowed to come straight through that bat. Now it's important here that the insulation that is installed isn't compressed and that it, it fits as snugly as possible within the actual battens that have been installed. So when you do purchase insulation, you've got to make sure that you get the bats that are right, the right width. The other thing that's really important when it comes to putting in insulation, especially when you don't have an air barrier on the outside, is that this insulation needs to be as abutted as possible to the plasterboard. So if the insulation is not directly abutted to the plasterboard, air within the wall cavity can freely bypass the insulation and get in contact with your plasterboard, which means your insulation isn't working for you. The insulation will still have soundproofing qualities, but will not perform as well as it could for insulating your wall. So let's bring this insulation back flush. So now when your insulation is on, your insulation is in contact with the air barrier, which is the case in the majority of homes, and it works a lot more effectively. In some areas where you've got some wood detail in the way, you're going to have to make sure that the insulation isn't getting compressed. But again, it's important that this insulation that's installed is going to be in contact with the plaster that is going to go on the face of this wall. So the reason why you don't want to compress this insulation is that it removes the ability for the insulation to hold air. So when you're compressing that insulation, it, it conducts more. And that, and that way it doesn't work as efficiently as it normally could. In this corner here, we've got, we've got some insulation that's finished to this pillar, but in the corner there's, it might look fantastic from here, but actually in the very corner, there's no insulation here. What we're gonna have to do is cut a square of insulation out in order to fit inside there. We've got a 15 by 15 centimeter square of insulation that we've got to make up. You're going to make sure that that comes in contact with the concrete floor. This little spot inside here, we'll fill that up with foam fill. So in this particular situation, we're going to have insulation installed for the whole wall system. 
the cavity behind the wall, which is backed up against a bitumen membrane, and then all the way up to the plaster. So again, it's really important for building performance that all the nooks and crannies are absolutely jam-packed with insulation and you don't have compression. The other thing is, if you're gonna be using insulation directly abutted a bare brick wall on the back side, you have to make sure that the insulation is not in contact with the bricks. And then you also need to make sure that the insulation that's being installed, once it's plastered, that that insulation is as close as possible to the gyp rock. And if you get that right, you'll have a really well-performing wall system.